Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another Subson tutorial where we start adding details to this Horizon Zero Dawn inspired mask or helmet. Still haven't figured it out. If you are new to this channel, I post tutorials on a weekly basis. Software includes Maya, ZBrush, and Substance Painter. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out that creativity, open up that software, and let's go ahead and get started in detailing this really cool looking mask. Okay, so here's some reference. So you can see that it's got this really interesting grid pattern here. It's got a couple of stuff going around and some of it's probably modeled, but I'm gonna be using normal maps to kind of bring that out. So you guys get to follow along and if you like, and also, you know, just see how powerful the substance can be. Uh, there's also a lot of other details, but we'll focus on this part first. So this is a great one because it's straight on and it shows all the nice details. And then this shows you the side detail. So some fun stuff. All right, I'm going to move this to the side on my second monitor and let's get started. So the first part I want to work on is probably around here. Now I already have a color map. So the only thing I really want is a height map. So let's create a new fill layer. And with this one, we just want the color and no rough, sorry, we only want the height. So let's go ahead and turn off everything else. And then we can either decrease or increase the height. So I'm going to decrease it because what I want to do is produce that interesting little indentation here. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this stuff. We substance power, uh, substance painter is actually very powerful. So it's very exciting. The first thing we're going to do is right click and let's create a black mask. And we're also going to turn on symmetry, which is right here. Symmetry basically means that if I do something on one side, it will affect the other side. All right. So this is, uh, the detail down here is pretty simple. I can use the base brush and I'm just going to hold down, uh, click on the bracket, which will, as you can see, it automatically changes the size. So left bracket or right bracket, it's like Photoshop. And I want a straight line basically from here down. So I'm going to, click once, hold down shift, and then click twice. And just like that, we have an indentation. Now what's cool about this mask is that I can always go back to the height map here and then reduce it even more or even flip it. So that's the cool thing about Substance Painter. Anyway, I'm going to keep ranting and rabbit about how great it is. Um, all right, let's move on to some other details that it has. It does have an indentation here. So I can go ahead and grab the mask. And if I want, I can use a paintbrush to kind of paint it in. Oops, forgot symmetry. Let's turn on symmetry and I can paint it on, but it's a little bit more square. So what I'm going to do is actually choose a different uh, brush. Now I can grab a different brush or I can also grab a different pattern. So these are the alphas. So uh, for example, if I click on, if I double click on this, my pen tool will, they will change and I can, you know, make an indentation. So the challenging part though, is finding the perfect alpha so that I brush in the, the nook. So let me scroll down and see if I can find something that looks like a rectangle. And here's one that looks like a square. It's kind of like a rectangle square. Uh, it's called the shape square squeeze. So that's interesting. So let's grab this one, double click on it and it will automatically go into your alpha right here. Now, right now it is facing the wrong way. So what I'm going to do is go scroll up and then turn on the angle. Now you can type it in. So I'm going to do 90 degrees and then the brush changes direction, but I needed to actually go a little further. So let me go ahead and do 45 degrees wrong direction and then go this way instead. So somewhere around here, let me reduce the brush again with the bracket. So I'm trying to create this indentation. Then I'll work on that one. And then I'm going to go click. And you can see that there it is. And I can click again if I want to. And there we go. Easy peasy. Now these are all pushed in. Anything that sticks out, I'm going to have to create a different layer. All right. So right now I'm just looking to see if there's anything I really want to do that actually pushes inward. So this pushes in, this pushes in, and everything else just kind of sticks out. So I'm going to have several layers with, um, with this. All right, so this is my dent one because I'm going to have a bunch of them. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. So, I mean, you don't have to duplicate it, but I am. You can do control D or go to duplicate layer. And I like to right click on the mask and basically clear the mask. 
Now this time with this one, I actually wanted to go up. So I'm going to increase my height to something here. So if I go back to my mask and I click, I'll be able to get something that rises. Find our design. Here we go. Let's grab it. Double click on it. Make sure this is in white. I'm going to make it a little bigger and then I'm just going to go pink. All right. looks like it's sticking in. So let me go back into my layer and change it to, to be higher. There we go. And now it looks like it's sticking out. So really quickly we can get some really nice indentations and details. So, so yeah, it's awesome. All right, let's move on to something a little bit more complicated. Let's talk about this area. So this area has a grid pattern plus a bunch of other details. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer just so I can, or use the same one, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, duplicate it. So again, the shortcut is control D and then this one, again, I'm going to right click and clear the mask, right? So it's nice and empty. And this time I want to use is a pattern. So to the right of the alphas, there's this portion here that's called textures and texture has a bunch of normal maps and things like that, but it also has these black and white images and I can use that to create that texture that's in the, um, the helmet. So the question is, which one do we want to choose? So let's say I want to choose, um, Hmm, there's a bunch of varieties. So maybe something a little sci-fi ish, maybe this one. And if I double click on it, you're going to see that nothing much seems to have happened. That's because I'm going to have to drag this into the alpha and now you can see it. Whee. Right. So if I hit it, you're going to see that it's sticking out, right? So I'm going to go back here and reduce my height and subtract it. The grid side's obviously too big. So um, I'm going to undo that, reduce my height again, go back to the black mask. And another issue that I have is that it is too big. I need the patterns to be really small. And of course I can always, and feel free to explore. There's a bunch of variety of different things that you can choose. So feel free to kind of mess around. That might be better actually. I like that one better. Um, but you know, the grid's too big. And if I grab a paintbrush and I'm supposed to stomp like this, I don't think so. So the easiest way to do it is by making your brush, you know, the size that you want it. So something like around here. And down here, there is some attributes that you can use. So here's our parameters and I can increase the tile. By increasing the tile and the preview gets a little blurry, you can actually get more. Now, obviously it's too much, so let's reduce the tiling. I can start getting the look that I'm looking for. That actually looks pretty good, but um, I feel like my layer, oh, let me go back. Bink. I feel like this is still a little too indebted. There we go. Something like that. Clear my mask again. You can make your brush bigger and then you can go clunk. Pink. 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 <laughs> Let's get a better angle here. Here. And it goes a little bit over here. Let's just paint it like this. There we go. I'm not too worried about it not being exactly perfect, but let's see. I'm just going to go ahead and do like this. Let me undo that again. Whoops. Edit, redo. Something like that. Okay. Cool. And then I can go back and just grab a regular brush. So just scroll all the way to the top. You can choose a basic hard brush. And remember that black means you can't see it. So switch this to black and then you can paint some of it out. So for example, I don't need it here. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint it out. And over here. Clean it over here too. Whoop. You can always hit the click once, hold down shift, and that will give you a straight line. So that's going to look much nicer. All right, we're getting started with the details. Very cool. 
And actually this needs to go a little higher, so let me grab that brush again, that texture. There it is. Let's check my tile. Let's increase my brush. Make sure this is in white. You can click on the letter X. It's almost like it's tilted. Let me see what's going on. It feels like I have a little bit of a tilt. So subtle. There you go. That's good. Okay, cool. Let me go back to my regular brush. Again, just go all the way to the top, grab a hard brush, and I'm just going to create this kind of clean it up a little bit. You can click once, hold down shift, Oop, and you can see it makes a dent. Why? Because I am using white. Let's flip it to black. Click once, hold down shift, and then you can clean this part up. Click once, hold down shift, pink. Click once, hold down shift, pink. Click once, hold down shift. There you go. All right, I think that's a good start. Let's go ahead and create another one. Uh, let's see, this one's extrude detail, so I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this one again, control D. Bring it to the top and I'm going to clear the mask again. Right click, clear mask. So this is going to be my grid. And this is the extrude. So now I'm going to start adding the details. So I want to make sure that this is in the positive, which it is. Go back to your mask. And just like with the little shortcut that we just did, we are going to click down here with white. Click here, hold down shift. Click up, and I'm drawing a little bit too much inward, so let me try that again. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller, so click once, shift, click, shift, click, shift. Actually, you just have to go straight. Then click, shift, click, shift, click, shift, click, shift, click, shift, click. Ta -da. Very cool. Very quick. We can get some nice detail. And you can also clean it up. All right, so with my details added, you can see that the grid's actually on the way. So let's clean it up. Let's go back to the grid. I mean, color black. I'm going to go ahead and click on this and do the same thing. Shift click. Just kind of paint away some of that. And I can always bring it back, which is the best thing about Substance Painter is that you can bring things in and bring things out. Like you can paint things in and paint things out really quickly. All right, I'm just holding down shift to make those straight lines. Just cleaning up those edges. All right, nice. We're getting some really great details. Let's go ahead and keep going with the details. Going back to this one, there's a little bit more details along here. So let's grab a, I'm going to grab a hard brush and just kind of fill it in. And this one actually goes down a little bit and to the Right, so then I can fill this in. And of course you can paint it here too. So you can do both in the model or actually on, well, anywhere really, on the model or on the UVs. Oh, it painted this side too. I'm gonna have to fix that. So we can click on X and just kind of paint this away. Just be very careful. Uh, let's see, where is it? Here it is, we don't need it here. You can see that it's impacting both of them, so it might be better to select it using this one, which is mesh. So this is UVs, and then this one you can say model, and then you can just select the model. So that gets that literally gets rid of the uh, the paint that I just did for the model. All right, it is coming along. Let's go ahead and add a little bit more. Let's see. Let's label. This is the okay. This is the extrude detail. I'm going to call this two. And looks like this one doesn't have anything, which is great because I need something to uh, add a little bit more texture. So let's grab another one of these for alphas and let's look for a rectangle. So up here at the top, you can actually type in rectangle and you can see that we have this one here, which again, I'm going to double click 
change this back to white and gonna make this a little bigger and I'm also going to rotate it 90 degrees so let's go to the angle and change it to 90 and we're going to put a little stamp right around here now it's a little big on this side so no problem can always go back to my basic brush let's get rid of this click X to make sure it's black and then you can paint it away very very easy awesome let's go back to this one and let's look for a circle there's a lot of circles in here just got to find the right one there it is it's called shape border circle <laughs> double click on it so you can get that circle and then this one's a little circle so I'm just gonna add it in pink oops you can't see it hit X and there it is and it looks like there's like little circles over here so I might add another circle here and there's also an indentation around here so I'm gonna add that too again I'm gonna change my angle to around 90 so you can see that the grid is impacting this section here and that's because it's well basically it's taking up all the information from the other layer so what you can do is go over here to the pull down menu choose height and instead of pi pass through you're gonna choose replace and then that will go ahead and replace it so that gives it a little bit more detail if you want let's go ahead and add another one let's uh, duplicate this layer so again control D we're gonna clear it let's see if I can make the height a little bigger something like that <laughs> just little details like that makes it much makes it cooler all right cool it's coming along okay for fun I'm gonna add a couple more things I'm gonna add this one just to make it a little bit more interesting to look at let's go back to zero gonna get close and let me see where is my indent I'm gonna put one on the right and left and there's a little dot right here so I might actually grab a another circle I just had a little one right here pink Oop, that's a little big a little brush Pink. very cool and very quickly too all right let me see there's a couple of things I want to add uh, let's see here I'm gonna grab a basic brush again whoops not that one let's go back to the top and let me add a little bit of a diagonal like so there we go that's part of it it's got a little bit smoother edges so I'm gonna go through and just kind of smooth out some edges neat all right let's put all everything in a group so let's grab all of our indents and everything create a group or a folder and then just drag them in there just make sure you grab all of them click and drag so these are gonna be my details helmet blue details so this is what we started off with and this is what we ended up with and all of them with just the tools provided here in substance painter and relatively quickly too it takes a little bit of experimenting but it's actually pretty neat all right let's focus down here I'm gonna work on this and then probably add details to that stuff in another one um, let's see we have the grid so let me grab the grid and just like last time we're going to go ahead and grab this one and if double clicking doesn't work just go ahead and click and drag it into here and that will give you the grid so now I'll just have to kind of place it let's tile it let's not forget to tile it I think I did a three or a four something like that the little bracket a little bigger and then I'm going to stamp it seems kind of big let's go to three stamp all right let's rotate it slightly that looks better and it goes up a little bit so I'll just go ahead and stamp it around here too a 
Okay, let's see. We also have some indentations here. So I think that we have some extrude details here. So I'm gonna grab this one, which has the highest one. And I'm going to take a regular brush, double click, and then add my details. So hold down shift. Click once, hold down shift. Dink. Now you can see that it's it needs to pass through. So let's go to the height and just make sure that this is replace. And let's double check to make sure nothing happened over here. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and uh, just kind of replace this. So I could clean it up or I can just use replace. Here to here, here to here, 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 and from here to here. So let me clean it up by clicking X and cleaning it up here so I can get a better line. Now there seems to be a line all the way down so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab a bigger brush though. And this time I'm going to grab a soft brush. Click once, hold down shift, click twice. Hit X again, click once, hold down shift, click twice. Whoa, there it is. Click once, holding down shift, all the way down. And then along here as well. Let's go ahead and add that detail here. So again, this is probably all modeled, I'm going to imagine, but it's also kind of neat to see that you can, in fact, texture it, um, add details to it using just a normal map. Keep it nice and low. Cool. And let's get rid of the grid before I forget. Kind of hard to forget, but let's make it into a small brush. Hold that click X and paint out the grid. There we go. Getting some cool detail there. Let's grab a alpha. And I see this one has a little bit, the angle that I'm looking at now has a bit of an indentation here and a couple of other sections. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of throw those out there. And I'm gonna make another one. Let's see, let's create, let's duplicate this, control D. Uh, let's clear the mask. It's funny, it just looks like a circle. That's why I'm like, <laughs> I actually wanted to do some, there it is, that's what I was looking for. Something like that maybe, or this direction's better. You can read it better if it's going this direction. So I'll just do add that in there as well. And then, you know, you can have some fun, have some fun creating details wherever you want. All right, cool. There you go, we got some grids. We've got some mass, we've got some really nice details and this is a good place to stop. So in the next one, we are gonna start focusing on this white section over here. As you can see, it's got some really great detail along here and here's the close up of it, but the shape's actually pretty unique. So I'm gonna show you guys how to create your own alpha map so that you can create these types of shapes. So it's gonna be fun. And then of course, add these type of details here. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. If you did, please like and subscribe. That is your message to me, letting me know that you like this content and that you want to see more. Don't forget to take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find free downloads, free eBooks, free 3D models, and so much more. So take a look at Academic Phoenix Plus. And while you're there, take a look at my courses. I do sell some courses. That Those are deep dives into Maya in modeling, texturing, UV mapping, and lighting. So take a look at those. Please leave a comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Are you enjoying these tutorials? Do you wanna see more? Let me know, It's I'm enjoying it. So hopefully you guys are getting something out of it too. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. In the next one, we're gonna add more details and then of course, bring it into Maya to bring it into our character and render it. So I will see you next time.